we've already kind of gotten a little bit taste of this, but this is just, if these divergences are true, this is just the beginning of this. Hello everyone, today Gareth Soloway talks about a decisive report coming up within 24 hours, the Fed's chairman's speech on inflation and markets, the jobs data, Bitcoin and crypto price actions and patterns, and his views on macro and stocks analysis. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. The largest cryptocurrency broke down toward $40,000 in a fresh bout of volatility, reaching its lowest level in a week. Arguably long overdue, Bitcoin's return to test support nonetheless caught bullish latecomers by surprise, liquidating almost $100 million in longs. The snap move provides a rude awakening for BTC investors at the start of a week, which already holds a multitude of potential volatility triggers. These come in the form of United States macro data that will immediately precede the Federal Reserve's next decision on interest rate policy. A bumper collection of numbers coming in swift succession means anything can happen on risk assets, and crypto is no exception. Now quickly just going to the US dollar, well let's go with rates first. Let's take a look at the 10 year. We knew we had isolated this level out prior as major pivot support. We basically came down, we kissed it beautifully right here, right? So again, we kissed it right in here, and then we've gotten that bounce to the upside. I've given you an upside target of where I think rates could go. You basically look at this area right in here, which then cuts right through this area, and we're looking approximately around 4.45 to 4.5%. All right, now again, I wanna just point this out. One of the things that I think is a little insane and why the markets are reacting emotionally on this hopium is that next year, the FOMC, the, the Fed Funds Futures is pricing in, or investors are pricing in, a 130 basis point cut in interest rates. And my point is this, is that right now the markets are saying, oh, yay rate cuts, and we're going to have this perfect soft landing in the economy where we're just going to continue to go just slightly growing and everything's going to be great. We sing kumbaya, right? The answer is this. If the Fed is forced to cut 130 basis points, in 2024, I guarantee you we're not singing kumbaya about the uh, economy. It's going to be a much, much different scenario, uh, a poor economy at that point, probably a pretty bad recession. All right, so a couple other charts here to go over uh, before we get into things here as we go through. So I just want to show you the U.S. dollar again. The U.S. dollar, if we just flip over to this chart, we are back into resistance on the U.S. dollar. Now, the reason why this is important here, folks, is that if we look at this pivot to this pivot, goes right to here. Now, again, notice how we just didn't, we hit this, and you can see there's a red candle here and then a green back up. The more we hammer on this to the upside, the more the chance is we could actually break through and go to the next level right here around 105 on the US dollar. And again, the dollar's actually gained some decent strength. After putting in this low near 102, the US dollar's back to 104 and change. If it breaks here, that's a pretty impressive retrace. Now again, do I think the dollar's gonna stay strong? No, honestly, I don't. I think eventually the dollar rolls over, but needless to say, the markets prefer a weak dollar right now versus a strong dollar. All right, on to Bitcoin. We got to talk Bitcoin, guys. Bitcoin had this dump last night, tremendous drop. The first thing that I thought about is, wow, Bitcoin's market cap is approaching a trillion dollars again. How does the SEC looking to approve a spot ETF like it when it drops from 44,000 down to almost 40,000 in a matter of minutes? Because that would be the equivalent of something like Microsoft, or you know meta or something like that you know basically having a flash crash and that is dangerous so again we did see this big drop now again if you've been following what we've been talking about we talked about how price can still go up maybe as high as 48 to 50,000 but price is getting overdone 
And again, I've continued to say that, hey, I'm inching in shorts here. Even if it goes up to 48, I'm just slowly inching in shorts. And I want to show you this, guys, because this is actually a game changer for me when it comes to the charts. So first off, here's your daily chart of uh, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, again, it's off of its lows, but look at the move up. Look at the consolidation. So this is the first negative thing I've seen on Bitcoin in a while, frankly. You had bullish consolidation here, okay, and then this. That kills the bullish consolidation. You can't claim this is a bull flag anymore. Once you have that down move, and we covered this in last week's game plans about the angles of flags, you need a 90 to 45 degree angle. Once it gets less than 90 degrees, like, you know, or I should say um, 45 degrees, once it's 35 or 30 or 20 degrees, it's no longer a high opportunity, high data driven trade. All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing I want to point out is the alts have incredible incredible negative divergences. When I was looking at divergences on the RSI last la this weekend, I was floored. I literally was floored by the negative divergences. And it made me honestly think, you know, uh, you know, the alts have been running incredibly, but the negative divergences have me saying, holy cow, what the heck is going on? And I want to show you this on a chart like Solana, right? So I know, listen, and I'm probably going to piss off a lot of people out there. But the point is, is that I'm here to point out reality. And it doesn't mean that, that this is going to play out. It, it could totally ignore it. But my point is, it's important to know the possibilities, right? Good investors know the possibilities. Then you make your decision, whatever it may be. So what I want to show you here is the, the divergence that has occurred in the chart of Solana. So when we look at Solana here, we can clearly see that here you had a high and here was a higher high. So that implies that the RSI should have made a high here and it should have made a higher high here. If we look down here and we draw that in, we see a high here on the RSI and a huge negative divergence on the RSI to the downside. See how this line is sloping down while this is sloping up. Now, the kicker is this, guys, is that when you see negative divergences, it basically tells you that small money continues to buy, but big money continues to unload. And so that's why I pay attention to the RSI negative divergences is because it literally gives you a heads up that there's something not quite right. That at some point, and this is the tricky thing with RSI divergences, you don't really have an exact time frame. That's where you have to go to like the, the intraday charts or the daily charts to find that topping tail or that trend line or whatever it may be. But the RSI divergences tells you something is brewing, something is coming. Okay, so all of a sudden you can see here we have the negative divergence and then what happened last night? Boom right to the downside where this thing literally fell, you know, about five to six dollars, almost 10 percent on that chart. Now, if we go to some of these other altcoins, they're much the same, right? So if we look at a Cardano, all right, take a look at Cardano here if we go to this and we can generally see that you're still in that same position where you have a negative or equal divergence. Here in this case, it's about an equal divergence same height here. Oh no, check that. My apologies. It's actually much, much lower here. Oh, check that. There we go. So here's your flatlining divergence. If we go right here is equal over here. Yet look at how much price has gone up instead. And again, this is more of a flat divergence. Uh, but again, it's much more dramatic there. I'd say Solana is the most impressive one of them all. Um, if we look at other ones, let's look at a few others in the altcoin market. If we take a look here, here's a good example again on Rune. Take a look at this. Here you have, again, an example of where are your high pivots, right? So if we look at here, right here was a high. Here was a high on the divergence. If you look at this, that's a higher high. But look, all the way down here, you're now lower. So higher and lower. And again, I'm only pointing this out because, again, it's just information, right? You know, my goal here is to show you information and give you probabilities and data and all that stuff. And that's an interesting thing. And you're seeing this more and more in the altcoins. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, um, let me see if it actually shows up on Bitcoin as well here. 
because that would be fascinating if it did. I'm not sure if it does. Um, wow, the answer is yes, it does on Bitcoin. Wow. All right, so let me show you guys this. So last one I'll do, and then we're going to move on to gold, natural gas, and oil. But very clearly here, look at this. All right, here's a high on Bitcoin, and look at the RSI. Here's a higher high on Bitcoin, all right? Here's a lower RSI. Here's a way higher high on Bitcoin. I left those lines in there here. In fact, we'll move it around. So look at this trend line down. Look at the trend line to the upside. And again, negative divergences. And again, I guess what this tells me is that whether or not we get to 48,000 to 50,000, I'm not sure. I think that to me is my max upside. But it tells me that there's going to be a more impressive flush. We've already kind of gotten a little bit taste of this. But this is just, if these divergences are true, this is just the beginning of this. And I know it's not going to be popular out there, guys. I'm just giving you information. Do what, it, do what you will with it. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's make this journey to financial empowerment unforgettable.